As popular as Pokemon is, the main series games aren't for everyone. They followed the same, or at least extremely similar formula for more than 20 years now. And even though it's a formula that a lot of people like, it's not surprising that some have either grown out of it, or never liked it in the first place. But, if you do happen to be one of these people, this video is specifically for you. And since there is so much to cover, I figured I'd get someone else who's just as passionate as I am about the franchise to help out. Hey guys, Ron here, you know, from True Green 7 Well, today I'm helping Alex show the world that Pokemon is much more than just a children's role-playing game. There is literally something in the franchise for anybody, whether you're more into card games, fighting games, strategy games, puzzle games, drawing, MOBAs, there is bound to be a game that'll help you become a Pokemon fan. And if you're looking to get back into the franchise, we even go over what games in the main series are more tailored to your preferences. Although, that's a separate video you can check out over on my channel when you're done with this one. So, if you're interested to see some of the other things the Pokemon franchise has to offer outside of just the main series games, this video is just for you. Let's start with something a bit more familiar. The main series Pokemon games are known for a lot of puzzle solving inside of them, but if you are a nerd, like really nerdy, what I mean by that is puzzle games are all you like to do, play a game where you're constantly solving puzzles without the fluff in the middle, well there's plenty to choose from. If you're into match 3 games like Candy Crush, Pokemon Troze or Pokemon Link in Europe might be something that piques your interest. It's essentially, as I said, a game where you're matching or linking the same Pokemon that land next to each other. Although if you're looking for something a bit more challenging, Pokemon Battle Troze on the 3DS is almost the same game, except you're battling Pokemon at the same time. Now what if you're a nerd, but like the cool kind of nerd that likes to solve mysteries? Then Detective Pikachu is the game for you. If you've seen the film and want a more fleshed out story that actually diverges a bit from the film's plot, you'll enjoy this. The puzzles are simple yet engaging and you'll see lots of entertaining Pokemon interactions. Now for someone who's into fighting games, like I am, there are two obvious choices. While technically not a Pokemon game, but a game that contains many Pokemon, the Smash series is one that's loved by almost everyone. Even people who aren't that big into fighting games tend to enjoy Smash, but there's a very good chance you're already familiar with it. If you're looking for a more traditional fighting game on the other hand, there's Pokken Tournament. Made by the same people who gave us the Tekken series, Pokken is a fighting game whose characters are all Pokemon, and with this fighting game, most traditional fighting games are either 2D or 3D. Well, Pokken is both, starting out 3D and then being able to switch into 2D, making it slightly more unique to other fighting games. Now if you like art or want to get into art, why not learn how to draw and paint with Pokemon Art Academy? It's a super chill game that lets you draw various Pokemon step by step in increasing difficulty levels. Let's say the only thing about the Pokemon franchise you like is the battling. You just want to have a team of Pokemon you like and use them for traditional Pokemon battling against others and not have to resort to playing Pokemon Showdown. Well, your best bet might be a Pokemon Battle Simulator, like Pokemon Stadium 2 or Pokemon Battle Revolution. These games are quite outdated in terms of graphics and Pokemon available, but are some of the better Pokemon games if you wanted to battle against your friends or just the computer, and have cool looking battles at the same time. If you're into photography or beautiful sceneries that you want to cherish forever, Pokemon Snap and the upcoming sequel allow you to go on the rails through various Pokemon filled environments and take pictures of your favorite pocket monsters, and you'll be graded based on composition, technique and more. It's a fan favorite for a reason. Stories seen by many as one of the more important aspects of modern video games, and while not seen as very cinematic compared to other games, the Mystery Dungeon series provides the player with a fun, interesting story to follow, playing a character who is a human at first, who then transforms into a Pokemon of either their choice or letting the game decide, going on adventures while trying to figure out what exactly happened to you. But sometimes, Pokemon games have noteworthy stories as well. If you're looking to dip your toes into the main series franchise but value a game's plot, then Pokemon Black and White and Pokemon Sun and Moon are your best bets. Black and White have a more introspective and epic story dealing with the ethics of Pokemon training and extreme indoctrination, while Pokemon Sun and Moon have a more character-driven tale about dimensions and parental abuse, although to be fair, Black and White has some parental abuse as well. Every good Pokemon story has terrible parents. Now, if you're someone who loves exploration in video games, but wants something different to explore, there are also Pokemon games just for that. The Pokemon Ranger games contain whole new regions completely different to any of the main series games, being the regions of Fiora, Almia, and Oblivia, but with a completely different style of play compared to a traditional Pokemon game. Pokemon Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness also offer an entire region to explore, 
in the form of the Aura region. Not the most appealing looking region I will say, but something a bit different from the main series games that's for sure. And finally, we have Pokemon Park, being the most out there game compared to what we've looked at so far. Here, you play as a Pikachu that explores various different locations, so I guess you can imagine this location as its own little region itself. If you're into history, epic tales, and, well, deep lore, Pokemon Conquest is a pretty big recommendation. It takes place in a feudal-era Pokemon world, with historical Japanese warlords and warriors. It's honestly one of the most mature Pokemon games ever. It's a crossover with Nobunaga's ambition, after all. But I'd recommend the same game if you're a fan of games like Fire Emblem and want to play a tactical RPG Pokemon game. Pokemon Conquest's gameplay is turn-based strategy, with each Pokemon knowing one move, but capable of different kinds of movement, like chess pieces on a chessboard. Do you remember that old pinball game that came on every computer back in the 90s? Well now imagine a Pokemon version of it, where you're also able to catch Pokemon at the same time, as well as battling them. With the Game Boy Color version, and the Ruby and Sapphire pinball version, you're able to do exactly that. I do think these games would have much suited the dual screen handheld consoles, since if you go high enough, it'll go to a different screen. But still fun pinball games, with slight twists nonetheless. Hey kids, you like minigames? If you want to play some quick sessions of various game formats, Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2 have some of the most memorable party games around, definitely the most memorable in the franchise. Pokepark isn't bad either, it's not exactly a minigame series, but then again, Pokemon Stadium isn't either. But Pokebark's gameplay has many different formats. One second you're racing against Pokemon, and the other you're playing Brick Breaker against a Bastiodon. Fun fact, there are also cool minigames in the main series games to play. A fine example would be Voltorb Flip in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This game is kind of like a Pokemon version of Minesweeper. That probably isn't the most appealing description of a game, but it's still a fun little game to play that may appeal to some people who enjoy puzzle games. Wait, Alex, nobody's gonna buy Heart Gold just to get to the mini games. That's that's kind of dumb. You don't know that. If if you bought Heart Gold and Soul Silver for Voltorb Flip, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. If you like collecting games, then you're in luck, cause Pokemon is all about that, what with the gotta catch em all and whatnot. Two main series games I'd say a new Pokemon fan would enjoy are Pokemon Let's Go and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Let's Go, since it's actually the only main series game in which catching Pokemon takes precedence over battling them, and Omega Ruby is for the hardcore collectors who want a long and satisfying collecting adventure. Sword and Shield are my personal favorite games to collect Pokemon in, since all the Pokemon are in the overworld and interactable, but I wouldn't buy those games if collecting is all you want to do. If you're into collecting, but not so much into the traditional Pokemon gameplay, something like the Pokemon Rumble series might pique your interest. In this series, Pokemon act as wind-up toys that you basically want to run into and collect. A pretty unique idea for a Pokemon game. Pokemon Go right now is the biggest game in terms of collecting Pokemon, although you probably already knew that. It's also the game on the list with the longest lifespan, since it's still incredibly active right now, and more and more Pokemon and Shinies are being added to the game every now and then. Along with being able to battle and trade with friends, it is easily one of the most accessible Pokemon games when it comes to collecting. Pokemon Quest is another collection game, with a more unique art style, with Pokemon looking more like Lego pieces. The game is only limited to the first generation of Pokemon right now, but it's still a cool option for collectors. And the best part of these collection games, there are shiny forms in all of them. Gacha games are video games that implement a gacha mechanic in which the player spends in-game currency to acquire new characters or items to play with. Pokemon Masters and Technically Unite is this franchise's version of a gacha game, and while a main series fan would usually only play these games to see their favorite characters interacting with each other and expanding their lore and learning obscure facts about Tate and Liza, a gacha fan would be particularly invested in getting as many powerful characters as possible, like Red and Cynthia. Now, if you're someone who loves card games, well... Pokemon has just that as well, in the form of the Pokemon TCG, or Pokemon Trading Card Game. You can play with actual cards you can trade and collect, or if you don't have access to them, play online with a pre-made deck, or just about any deck of your choosing. Online is also a great way to try out different decks, without having to own the cards. If you have the need for speed, then the Pokemon racing game for you is Pokemon Dash. It's complete rubbish, but it's still a racing game, so it counts. In terms of games that have longevity, and are still extremely active. We have the obvious Pokemon Go. What once was empty and lacked content, is now a game that's constantly changing with new updates, features, Pokemon. Hell, there's probably going to be a time where Pokemon Go has more Pokemon available to collect than any other Pokemon game. It's a game that isn't going away anytime soon. 
Do you play video games for humorous plots and silly characters? Considering Pokemon is a family-friendly franchise, there are a few Pokemon games that can amuse a player. Pokemon Rangers Shadows of Almia is heavily gameplay oriented, but the plot and characters, especially Team Dim Sun, are actually pretty humorous and intriguing. As you'd expect, Detective Pikachu is actually a quite funny game. You've probably watched the film, you know how entertaining Detective Pikachu is. What a character! Do you love hygiene? Or you like to play a game while brushing your teeth? Why not play Pokemon Smile, a game where you catch Pokemon by doing exactly that, brushing your teeth. Looks great. Yo, you like learning? I know I do. You know what's the most beneficial thing to learn in this modern landscape? How to type. How about playing Pokemon Typing Adventure? You get through levels by quickly typing the name of Pokemon that appear on screen, and the boss battle music is a little too epic if you ask me. Okay, what if you are a Pokemon fan years ago who hasn't touched a main series game in a long time and are looking to get back into the franchise? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee might be the most user-friendly and accessible Pokemon games for people wanting to come back to the franchise. Being a recent Pokemon game that's based on the very first region makes it much more familiar with people who used to be into the game. However, if you're wanting to come back looking for something that's still new, but at the same time somewhat familiar, Pokemon X and Y might be your best bet. It follows the traditional Pokemon gameplay, as well as having plenty of other nods to previous Pokemon games, like the beginning forest being the same shape as Viridian Forest, even getting to pick a Kanto starter near the beginning of the game. It's also on the slightly easier side of main series games, so again, definitely a Pokemon game worth trying if you want them to get back into the main series games. Pokemon isn't known for its graphics, especially the main series games, but if you're a stickler for high resolution textures and high end lighting and rendering, the new Pokemon Snap game is right up your alley. It's immaculate. Probably the best looking Pokemon game. If you're looking for Pokemon battles with nice lighting and rendering, Pokemon Revolution, specifically on an emulator with 1080p resolution, looks pretty sweet. The Wii version was good for its time, but despite what you might have heard, the models are actually not as good as Sword and Shield, and while the animations have more personality, they're pretty janky. When a move animation in Sword and Shield is good, like Pyro Ball, it's some of the best animation in the franchise. When people think of the Pokemon game with the most amount of content for the player to chew on, Pokemon Heart God and Soul Silver are usually the Pokemon games that are brought up the most, mainly being the latest Pokemon main series games to include more than one region. It also has plenty of other things for the player to do, like the Pokeathlon, the Battle Frontier, 16 gym leaders, a battle with Red, Pokemon following you, it's no surprise why this is the fan favorite Pokemon game. For those who want to get into the franchise but don't particularly care about getting caught up with all the past lore and mechanics and just want to jump right into the latest adventure, Pokemon Sword and Shield are perfectly fine. With Pokemon in the overworld and an epic gym challenge, the main draws of Pokemon have never been stronger in the Gen 8 titles. But if you want to become a hardcore Pokemon fan but haven't played a Pokemon game yet, chances are you want to find the perfect game to start from. I always say that Fire Red and Leaf Green are the perfect first Pokemon games. They're the most simplified version of the Pokemon journey while still having enough content. It starts you out in the region of the first generation, Kanto, and introduces you to the world of Pokemon with the first 151 Pokemon available. Now let's say you enjoy playing done, mindless Pokemon games, like Flappy Bird. You want to play a Pokemon version of Flappy Bird? Well, there isn't really one. However, there's Magikarp Jump, which is kind of like Flappy Bird, I, I think. I, I don't think it is, but, but still. Who doesn't want to have a go at a game where they play as a Magikarp throughout, where your main goal of the game is to jump as high as possible and that's pretty much all you do, I think. Come on, it looks kind of fun. But what if you're already a big Pokemon fan and want to know which main series Pokemon game is the best for you based on your personal preferences when it comes to Pokemon adventures? Well, watch the video Alex and I made on my channel where we talk about which main series Pokemon game is the best if you play for exploration or challenge or collecting or any other aspect of the main series Pokemon games. So like Ron said, if you want to see another video by us, do head over to his channel to check it out. Whether you came from his video or not, I do hope you enjoyed what we had to show off. And please do leave a like if you did, as it does help the video out. Subscribe for more Pokemon content in the future. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.